I mean, blessed that Jesus would lay down his life, give his life, and we may find our own oh, yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. I'll be going to Isaiah 59, 19 at first. We'll be in Judges chapter 6. But if you want to turn to Isaiah 59, 19, please turn with me. Everybody awake this morning. We're here. I'm in love, Jesus. Hey, hey. Amen. How many know he uh, first loved us? Yes. So that means we must first love sinners. Why are they yet sinners, right? Yes. <laughs> Think about that now. Not, not be like the Pharisees and be quick to grab a stone. I don't know, that just, that's free. But uh, <laughs> I think we need that sometimes. Y'all ready to say amen? amen? Amen. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them if you'll bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. Help us to decrease and you increase. Lord, we want to thank you that you raised up that standard, the living word of God, that you are the risen standard, the risen Savior, Jesus, that you've come out of the tomb to stand on our behalf, to watch us, dear Lord, watch over us. When the enemy comes into our hearts or our lives or this nation like a flood, you raise up your word against him, the sword of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this, Lord. Help us now to raise up that standard, the word of the living God in our own lives against things that come after us, things that come at us, dear Lord. The spoken word, it is written. Every time the enemy comes in, whether it be in our dreams, our thoughts, our lives, we say it is written in the word of the living God to fight against him. Help us to raise that standard up in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. amen. Of course, the name of the sermon is The Risen Stamp. That's a gift. Part 3. The risen standard, part three. Go with me to Judges chapter six. Judges chapter six, we left it off. I'm going to read verse 13. But for those who haven't been here, what had happened is the children of Israel had sinned against God. And they did evil in the sight of God. So what happened is they were handed over to the Midianites. Their enemies had rule over them. The Amorites, the Midianites, they all came in and they took everything the children of Israel tried to plant as far as crops, as far as uh, an economy. It was destroyed. I'm telling you, it sounded a whole lot like America. Oh, yeah. Because America has sinned against God. And now we're almost the laughing stock of the whole world. Have y'all noticed that? Pretty much. Even Russia's laughing and mocking us. It's amazing. Russia is saying that we're more communistic than they are. That's kind of funny, isn't it? But it's amazing how our economy is starting to implode. And we wonder why. But when you go back to the biblical text, you understand why. When you lower the standard of a living God and lower His Word and kick Him out of everything, the schools, you take Him out of the schools, no more prayer in school. You can't have the Word of God in schools, but you can have the Quran. You can have uh, what they call culture day and things like that. You bring in false God systems, and what happens? Then the nation starts going under. We need the Lord Jesus Christ in this nation. But most of all, we need the Lord Jesus Christ in our church as a whole. Matter of fact, as a church as a whole, many, many of them have kicked Jesus out. I mean, you can see a nation getting ungodly and trying to kick Jesus out because most of them, many of them may be heathen. They may have a false belief system or they may believe in their own self. But why does the church kick Jesus out is what I want to know. Why does the church kick Jesus out for psychology and their own precepts and their own mindsets? That's why we are suffering right now. Because so as the church goes, so follows the nation. We are the salt and the light of the earth. And we blame leaders and politicians and presidents. We love to blame the top dogs. And, and sure enough, yeah, a lot of them are evil. Very evil. Wicked of their father the devil. Of the Antichrist spirit. However, they cannot do these things alone. Something has happened to the salt and light to present Jesus in this nation. And as that has happened, the enemies have come into this nation just like they had back then, and the people started dwelling in caves and strongholds. There are more people, if you do a survey, you'll see more people in strongholds in the church 
More addictions in the church. More mm -hmm. mental illness in the church. More people committing suicide in the church. When we got the salt and light, we got Jesus Christ. We got the answer. We got the power of the living God. It's amazing to me because He's the risen Savior. He's the risen standard. We have a comforter. We have a counselor. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the truth. We have the power of God. And yet we still find this in the church as a whole running rapid. And we wonder what's wrong with the nation. It's because we turn against His Word. And we started making our own precepts. You'll find homosexuality in the church. You'll find it in bishops. You'll find it in the leadership. You'll find them marrying homosexuals and saying it's okay. And I'm not just picking on one sin. There's many sins going on. You'll find adultery in the church. You'll find a pastor sleeping with different people in the church. Yeah. You'll find this happening. If we have a standard in our life, if we raise the word of the living God up in our life, amen, we wouldn't do such things because we'd have a fear of God, a reverence of God. Instead of just a fear of man and a reverence of man. But that's what's happening right now. But we serve a risen Savior. How many know that? He arose from the dead, praise God, to give us power over the enemy. We must know that too. Yes. That He come out of the tomb, that He dwells with us by the Holy Spirit. And He said, Behold, I am with you until the end. Always, Always. praise God. He'll never stop. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Even when we're out in the four walls of this building and we're somewhere else, guess who's with you? If you're saying Jesus. Amen. Always. Amen. You can know He's the reason standard. But going to verse 13, Gideon asked a very important question. I'm going to read verse 13, but then start at 17 where we left off last week. And Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And many people are asking the same question today. And that's what I was going over a while ago. Why has all these things forsaken, I mean, have come upon this country, not only the country, but the America as a whole, and the church too? Why is there, where's the great and mighty miracles of the Lord? And so, the Lord started showing him something in the rest of these texts. The first thing that we left off with last week is he said, you'll, you'll destroy or have victory over the enemy as one man. Let me find that verse. Right there in verse 16. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. So, when you see Midianites, don't look at a culture of people. Look at demon spirits. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. How many know that? Back then, they could not understand that because Jesus had not come, yet come with spirit and truth. But now we know Him in spirit and truth. Grace and truth come by who? The Lord Jesus Christ, it says in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. So now we know it's not the people that we're looking at. It's not Islamic people. It's not a different culture. It's not Buddhist people. It's not the Mexican people or anybody, any people that is our enemy. Get that straight, amen? amen. Because many people are looking at people and they think, that's our enemy. We need to kick them all out. 